Hey there. This video is for all you gearheads out there and all other automotive enthusiasts. Um, I'm going to give you a little tour of my uh, 71 Opel GT today. I've posted a few videos showing some autocross runs, just enjoying the car, and uh, I've also been in some interest on some forums um, after I participated in the 2016 and 2019 Grassroots Motorsports $2,000 Challenge. If you don't know what that is, check out the link below, grassrootsmotorsports.com. Awesome activity, awesome uh, event. Basically, you need to buy and build a race car for $2,000 or less and compete in three events, which include uh, autocross, drag racing, and a uh, concourse, which is basically, basically car show slash engineering contest. Great, uh, great participants, a lot of fun, a great magazine, and uh, you'll see some awesome cars, great ingenuity, and some pretty cool engineering. So check it out. Uh, if you're ever in Florida in October, September time frame, you should swing on by Gainesville and, and see that. You know, before I go and show the car, I also want to give a shout out to the guys at Wackity Racing. Uh, they're also building an Opel GT with a pretty cool Miata swap, um, doing some neat stuff, and uh, doing a lot of things. It's, it's kind of fun to see they run some of the change, same challenges that I ran into on my car. So without further ado, uh, I'll show you the car. Here we go. Here it is, 1971 Opel GT. Custom front spoiler. Hopefully you see that okay. Let's take a look up in here. There we go. There's that inner cooler. Alright, as we come around the back here, you can see we've got a side exit exhaust, some 17 by 8 Avid 1 wheels, got some 235-40 tires, nice and, uh, nice and fat there, stock, stock rear valence, there you have it. Now we'll go take a gander inside. So see on the inside, not much to look at as far as the aesthetics go. I haven't really put any carpeting in. Still have some stock door panels, uh, stock seats. We do have some uh, custom touches here with some aluminum custom made gear shift knob and uh, parking brake handle. Uh, on the gauge front, we're still running uh, the stock gauges. Get some light in here. So you can see, stock Opal gauges. If you're astute, you'll notice a little difference there on the speedometer from the stock Opal one. What you're seeing there is that the odometer down below is from the Nissan 240SX. I've uh, merged the, the gauges from the 240SX inside the Opal gauges, so it still remains the same Opal look, but uh, it communicates well with the, uh, the Nissan ECU, which is hiding right here in the glove box. Tucks away nicely there. Uh, got my little setup down here for doing some data logging. And the tuning. We have the stock Opal shifter as to the, the sleeper look here. Now, the interesting thing here is it's not running Opal, an Opal transmission. Um, and how that's done is the, the Nissan transmission actually is quite a bit longer than the Opal transmission. There are very few transmissions as small and short and light as the Opal transmission. So the Nissan transmission actually comes back clear to here, right around the, the uh, parking brake. And that's where the gear shift would come up. Well, I didn't want to cut a hole in my, my transmission tunnel, and I didn't want to lose my parking brake. So what I did is I cut off the gear shift lever off the, uh, off the Nissan transmission down to a stub, and then I made some linkage, which transfers the, the motion up here to the Opal gear shifter. And we can pull this boot up here, give you a look at that. Get that out of the way. Slide it forward, get some lights. There we go. Hopefully you can see that okay. And there we go. So we've got the Opal part of the, uh, some parts from the Opal transmission that, uh, for the hinge mechanism and the, the axis has been transferred over here on top of the Nissan transmission. And then there's some linkage which transfers that motion back to the, the stub shaft. And it works out quite well and keeps the original look there. Also, while we're in here, 
Now that we've got uh, that out of the way, let's go to the back. So the Opals do not have any rear hatch or trunk. So what we've got going on back here, so we've got a package tray. And back in here, you've got your gas tank from the inside. And what I've done here, you see still on the top there, that is a GM fuel assembly unit. So it has a built-in uh, surge tank, basically, an electric fuel pump to run the, the fuel injection. The reason for that is with the stock gas tank, you only have a spot come out the bottom, and anytime the gas sloshes away from that, you get an air bubble. That's not good as fuel injection. All right, so there we go. All right, let's see what's under the hood. Okay, so what we have here is an SR20 DET, um, S13 variant with a stock T25, um, run 10 PSI boost, but not well over 200 horsepower. Um, we have an uh, aftermarket gray style intake manifold, and let's see down in here, we have a log style manifold, top mounts, that's for packaging, make sure we can get it to fit in there. Nice and tight, uh, just barely in there. So, yeah. And if we look around here, go to the other side here on this turbo. You can see right down in here too well. Some more light in there. We can get uh, a little better job getting some light in here. A little hard to get it lit up underneath there. So there's the exhaust tucking down there past the transmission. Probably the hardest part about this uh, swap is fitting the turbo and the exhaust in. In this case, it all fits underneath the hood. So it can be done. Um, also running a uh, Honda Civic radiator. You can see right here. And uh, these things are great for engine swaps. Nice, compact, good size. Just barely in front of the radiator support. The reason for that is just to give me a little more space in here to be able to work on the engine in between. And also to uh, and also lock a little bit of air circulation. Well, in front here, we, we have tucked that right up underneath there. This is the front mount intercooler. Piping comes back around, goes back up kind of to the, where the original piping was, and to the intake manifold. Uh, we're also running a, a Subaru fan and a Volvo uh, fan control unit with a BMW thermostatic uh, switch to regulate it. And right there, we're running a Geo Metro. Alternator. The reason for this is because the stock alternator won't fit between the frame rail and the, the engine, and the Geo's got the smallest alternator that uh, pretty much you can buy on a uh, factory car. So there we go. Um, also, another thing to note: we're running a compact long tractor battery, 230 cranking amps, which is plenty for this four-cylinder engine, and uh, only weighs 12 pounds, and only costs 25 dollars. So double win there. So one of the goals with this swap and putting the engine in where it is is to clear the hood so that it still looks stock, but also be able to work on it. So we do have enough room, and it tucks up underneath the cowl there, but there's enough room to be able to get the valve cover off, there's enough room to be able to change the spark plug, and do your basic maintenance. Okay, well here we go, we'll go underneath now, and we'll take out the exhaust first. So as you can see, as I said, the exhaust pumps out straight about the transmission. It's real tight in there. And we got it curving out and just a straight shot out there right in front of the rear wheel. Makes for a quick exit and a good flow for, the for spooling the turbo. I used to have a full exhaust going all the way to the back, but that would cross over underneath. So I got sick of that dragging on the ground and uh, running go over bumps and also hitting the, the rear axle. So other things we can see up here. See how well we can see this. I get up in here. There we can see that. I've got the original Opal cross member, which I've notched and cut and, and reattached that welded down there in order for the uh, Nissan pan to fit in place. And that's also the, the original motor mount um, bracket on the cross member that's been cut, turned around, flipped from left to right using some uh, S10 Iron Duke. Motor mounts right there, a little bit of everything. You see my my, my roll bar here, 
this is off a, about a 2,000 Pontiac Firebird. It's been cut down to fit and rewelded back together. We've also got a fiberglass front spring here to replace the original front spring. So you're going across that um, with uh, some custom adjusters here. So it's adjustable. You can adjust ride height and corner weight with that. Also, you can see it's not pretty yet, but you got them there. The uh, stock stamped sheet metal um, control arms have been uh, reinforced with some, some gussets, some, some box again to make them stiffer. Um, running just a KY, KYB shock right now. Uh, bump stops have been cut down. And that's pretty much it, other than some uh, polyurethane bushings. All right, so we'll take a look at the rest of the front suspension here and take a look at the, the brakes. A little easier here with the wheel off. So we'll go ahead and move that. And there we go. So what we've got going on here, you know, one-inch wheel spacer. That's because of the uh, the more modern offset. And there we go. You see the the shocks. What about better look at our suspension here? Double A arm. Um, running some Volvo four piston calipers and with a vented Honda Prelude SI front brake rotor. Um, nice thing about the Volvo calipers is they have the same bolt pattern bolt right up to the opal uh, steering knuckle there. And if we come down here, there's another look at that adjustable uh, spring there. Fiberglass. Nice thing about the fiberglass spring is it's lightweight. It only weighs about uh, seven pounds total. So it cuts quite a bit of weight off the front end. And the other thing is, besides being adjustable, it's much more responsive than the steel springs are. All right, well, here we go. Here's from the underside, you can see the Nissan transmission. And uh, we're using the Nissan cross number there, flipped around backwards, add some extension onto it. As you can see, I also created a uh, kind of a small subframe, subframe connector that ties across from the uh, the back pickup points of the original torque tube and bolts up the transmission mount up here, ties across and gives a nice location for the torque arm to go. See that's kind of custom fab of torque arm. We're using some pieces from the uh, the Volvo rear axle. This is a uh, out of a, it's a 1031 Volvo, seven and five eighths ring gear uh, with an auto locking differential in it, uh, bolted onto the original pickup points for the torque arm from the Volvo. So it works out nice to keep the same style suspension as the Opal had. Um, you can see up here too it's it's adjustable. And uh, yeah we've also got some let's see over there. We've got some Honda S two thousand uh, lower control arm adjusters. So the lower control arm is now adjustable. I can now line up the rear axle, change the change the instant center. And uh, yeah, so that's it. Still, uh, still kind of looks like the opal, opal setup with the same spring buckets that have just been removed from the opal axle and installed on the Volvo axle. And uh, the drive shaft you see here is a stock manual transmission um, Z31 uh, 300ZX drive shaft. So it just happened to be just the right length, and I just needed to use. A couple of uh, machines friend make me some adapters so I can adapt the, the U joint to fit the bulb over end. You see, I've got a, a tow hitch on there. I added that so I can use a tire trailer, go into the track, bring some race tires with me. The uh, nice thing is, this came off the uh, Scion TC and it pretty much was just the right fit. All I needed to do was put a notch a little bit right here, a little more than it was. And uh, you see the rear axle there again, made the, the pan hard rod adjustable. So you can uh, adjust the center, make sure it's when you lower it that it still keeps the axle centered. Okay, and uh, here's a little better view of that torque arm. Let's see, this one's been a work in progress. And the mount. Go up, up here, we see up inside there to see how tight everything is. Here's the, there's the fuel line, runs down along here, and tucks up behind the rear wheel, 
tucks right up in there and out of the way. That comes around, comes right up through the body, up in there, and up to the uh, gas tank. Okay, here, so here's another view of the, the exhaust setup. So two and a half inch exhaust, ran into the same problem the guys in Lucky Racing described about having very little room to fit their exhaust pipe. It was two and a half inch between the uh, transmission and the footwell, and let alone fit a clamp there or a flange for a clamp. So my solution is just a straight pipe coming down all one piece. You can work it down. And then this band style clamp right here, which runs about $10 real nice, makes up two of the same size pipe. Just wrap around the outside and clamp it down tight. Oh, also, you can see a better look here at the uh, cross member that I, I made for holding the torque arm. It also doubles as a catch for the drive shaft. Uh, this already has done its job. I snapped the drive shaft on launch at the 2019 Grassroots Motorsports Challenge, and uh, it did what it needed to do to, to catch the drive shaft. All right, well, there you go. Um, now you've seen what uh, I believe is the first and only SR20 DET swapped Opal GT. And uh, despite what uh, the Internet lure would say, that it won't fit in one of these, it does. I said it wouldn't fit clear the hood. And as you've seen, it does, not only does it clear the hood, the hood doesn't even have to be modified, and it fits completely underneath it. So a lot of fun. Um, stock engine was 1.9 liters, so roughly the same displacement, but you know, rated at 102 horsepower. Realistically, it was putting out 75 horsepower, maybe 80 horsepower. So running 200 plus horsepower with this, well over twice the original horsepower, in a car that weighs just a smidge over 2,100 pounds. So it's a blast to drive. Um, it can be quite a handful, especially once that turbo kicks in, and it'll it'll smoke the tires on you if you're not careful. Uh, quarter mile wise, just to kind of give you a gauge, uh, best I've run. I've only ran a, taken a few passes, 14.1 at 101 miles an hour, and uh, that's with almost a, a three second 60 foot time um, because it just was spinning the tires first second gear. And uh, so there you go. Uh, you can stay tuned for more. I'll probably try to post some more videos of uh, some more progress on this and other projects, like the one over here. You see, if you're a student, you can tell that's another Nissan engine. And uh, I won't tell you what the chassis is, but uh, it's not an Opal. <laughs>